Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to uh, uh, teach beginners how to get started in China painting and get some of those of you that have uh, uh, no one to paint with to paint along with us and hopefully uh, give us some suggestions if you have them, things like that. So um, we're going to finish up our hydrangea today, our hydrangea plate. And I think it'll uh, turn out pretty nice. This is the way my second fire turned out. And uh, I'm real pleased with it. For those of you that were trying to get colors that were close to the Imperial Jade, I found another one that's awfully, awfully close. It's called uh, Russian Green. And I don't know if they make that still or not, but this is Russian Green. This is Imperial Jade. Look, I mean, they're almost identical. Imperial Jade is slightly lighter. So if you have Russian green, that will work just as well, I think, as Imperial Jade and give you a similar look uh, to your piece in the end. Colors are not changing this time. We're going to be using the blue black, the Imperial Jade, or like I said, the Russian green if you have it, um, old gold green, the um, cool shadow, the old ivory, and then I have a black green here. We're also going to be using pretty much the same brushes. I'm going to be using my big, what is this? This is a, a two, you know, a three quarters inch brush. And then we're also going to use a number 10. And this is what the number 10 looks like. Number 10 is um, the one that um, I prefer for most things, you know, depending on what we're painting. Then we're going to use a lot of smaller brushes too, just to put in little details and what have you. Also, before I angle you down, um, I haven't mentioned this before because I kind of assume people knew, but I shouldn't because there are beginners watching this. This is a sanding sponge. You can get it from Dallas. You can get it from Maryland, China. This side is a low grit sandpaper. And what you do is when your piece comes out of the kiln, you're going to just feel your piece. When it comes out of the kiln, sand it. And it doesn't matter how big or small your piece is. You're just going to rub this over the whole thing. Make sure you get off any grit from inside the kiln and then sort of run your hand over it. Make sure you've gotten everything off. That will make sure your piece is nice and ready to go. And then before you start painting on it, you're going to want to, um, I use, I think this is just um, alcohol, you know, um, um, isopropyl alcohol. And I just, I just wipe my piece and dry it very well before I get ready to start. So we're going to start with the, um, the Imperial Jade. And we're just going to put it on our brush, a full load. This is a full load, you know, just like this. Just put it right on the brush. And I'm going to start going around the background just like I did before. But this time I'm going to kind of tuck the color in around these, these little petals here so that I don't mess them up too much. Okay, maybe I get a little more here. And I'm just going to come out. Need a little more oil. Another way you can tell you need oil is if your brush starts separating on the end. And that's a sure giveaway too, if, it, if you can see individual bristles. Okay, so again, I just go around and slap it on, and then I sort of do a little bit of cross hatching to pull it out. Okay? And this this way and then that way. And then I go up in here a little bit. Let's do right here. Okay, there, there. I'm just trying to get the background back in again because I want the background, if you remember, this is the final product that we're going to be working towards. The background is really deep. So I want to make sure that you see it. Okay, and we're just going to Come all the way over to here. I'm going to add a leaf right there. Um, so I'm just going to come out a little more here. All righty. Okay, and now I'm going to start and take some of the green and go down in here. Uh, it's still the, um, the jade. I'm adding a little bit of the darker green to it just to kind of, but just that far. I'm not going to do much more than that right now. We're going to work on this one first. So now I'm going into my favorite color of all time, and that, of course, is blue-black. If you don't have blue-black, mix a little black with some Copenhagen, and you should be able to get it. And you're just going to just gonna side load now with it. The side load 
I go in like this and side load, okay? You only use this corner of your brush and you do C strokes into the paint like this and that's side loading. All right, and I'm just gonna put it around this little guy here. And you can bring it down now. I imagine the light is coming from up here. So I might bring a little more of the blue down this way because this is going to be in more shadow than the top part of it is. Then I'm also going to take some of it and put it here on the bottom part of this big one and on the bottom part here of this one. I want it. That's a nice deep blue. I think I'm going to darken this a little up here. Okay. Um, your strokes on this part of it don't have to be anything uh, too fancy. So if you if they're choppy, that's fine. You just want to get the color in right now, okay? And then I'm going to clean my brush. I'm using mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits to clean my brush. And I'm using just my medium plus to paint with. And I'm going to full load with cool shadow and side load with a little bit of the jade and uh, uh, and I'm going to just finish off this side here a little bit okay now I want to do the leaf I, I made a template and I just put the template where I wanted it and then traced it a little bit with a pencil so that I had an idea of what direction that leaf was going to be and what it was going to look like so I'm going to put the base of the leaf in here like this Okay, that's a base of a new leaf. I thought it needed it to sort of balance things out. And then I'm going to bring a little down this way and a little over there. Nothing fancy. Wipe out a little bit of a highlight there. And I'm going to take a little bit of the black green and put it right here. Okay, so we've got this guy surrounded now. We're pretty much going to do like we did the last time. We're going to go through and add a little of the green up here now. You've already got these areas pounced out where you know you wanted it to be bright. So if you don't want to go back into those areas, you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. But I'm taking my Imperial Jade and I'm just wiping it into some of those areas so that I have a little bit of shading there. Now remember, if the light's coming from this direction up here, this part of it is going to be very light. In this area, this is going to be a little bit in shadow, and so is that. I don't want my whole shadow to be the Imperial Jade, so I'm taking the old gold green and I'm putting a little of that down here just to give me a variety in the shadow. You don't have to do that. If you like the old, if you like the Imperial Jade or whatever color you're using, and you can use blues too, then you could do that as well. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to take the stump. We're going to just begin at the outside edge. Now, you know what? You can use the stump. It works really well. You can also use, if you have a number four brush, or if you have a little rounded brush like I do that's a number four, and dip it in turpentine, pat it off on your towel really well so that there's no turpentine on it. And, and then go ahead and, and do this. So I'm starting in the middle here and making sure that I have my middle ones wiped out. And you want the edge ones wiped out so that they are a little clean, you know, so they aren't like... And you're just going to make... And let's do this again. If you missed it last week, I'll show you real quickly how we're doing the, the uh, hydrangea. I'm going to take a little of my blue black which is a nice dark color here I'm going to paint it on my tile just so you can see it okay and I'm going to take my stump and you're going to go this way and this way the top is wider than the bottom but you know don't sweat the small stuff if you don't remember that that's fine you're going to almost make the outline of a forget-me-not. Just think about a little forget-me-not, okay? 
This is how we're doing it. And the reason we're doing it about the same as we did last time is because obviously we have um, the paint over it, like almost like you're doing a background over it. Then I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to use um, my little number four. You don't have to. This is my little number four with the rounded edge. And I'm just going to pull the color towards the middle or pull it out. You can completely wipe it out on this time if you want. It's it's up to you what you want to do. Okay. You can do that all the way around. And then you're going to start building on that. So you're going to do one here. And you're going to do one here. And then see if you want that to be the center of it. You might do another one here. And you might do another one here. And then you can even go back with your stump if you wanted or your eraser. You can use a wedge eraser that looks like this. You know, I use this end, the round end of it, but it also has this end, which is a kind of a wedge. And you can just wipe out a little, maybe even just wipe out one side. See, if you wipe out one side, sometimes it gives it a little more dimension. So that's what I'm doing basically, in case you can't see it close up. Okay, so I think I'm going to use my brush because, honestly, my brush goes a little faster than the stump does. So I'm wiping it really well in, in Mineral Spirits, and then I'm coming back in and doing it on here. Now, as you get into the shadow, you're going to want to only do a portion. Let me show you here, for instance. This is a really good one. I'll bring it up so you can see a little better. I'm only going to do that that much there. And then that way it looks like it's retreating into the background, okay? And then on these others, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of bring them all together. There we go. Here's one. There's one. There's one. You kind of have to see what you did previously, so make sure you're happy with what you did ahead of time. See, on that one, I only did just the little tip of it. Okay, and here I'm going to do a little bit. Here I'm going to do a little bit. There, there. Until I get it so that I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I think I want, I stand back and I look at it and I think, I want a little more delineation up at the top so that they can see um, up in here so that you can really see where the hydrangea ends. So I'm just kind of using the side of it and pulling it so that you can at least see the hydrangea. But I'm only doing a portion of these petals. Um, I'm only doing the side that would face the sun. So like here, and I might go back to my stump. You have to decide what's working in the location. See there, that work, the stump works better with the green. Don't ask me why, it just does. So. You, you may alternate between them, but okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, okay? Now we're going to start doing the leaves. The leaves, I think I'm going to do um, this leaf, and I'm going to do it with my number 10. And I'm just going to put it in a combination, well, a combination of blue-black, kind of a full load of blue-black, side load of black green and I'm going to put the blue black up in here and the only reason I'm doing that is because this is under this this leaf is under this one and you can really see it a little better I think if you put a little blue black with the black green it really seems to help so I'm just doing some small strokes around they're kind of like C and comma strokes but don't get hung up on the strokes just get the paint around and most of the time uh, it's I pretend everything is side loaded and I just do C strokes. So don't get too hung up on the strokes here because this the strokes are not what's important. Put a little bit down the middle there. Now I'm going to go to the edge and let's see how I do this so that you can see it. Yeah, I think you can see it here, can't you? Yeah, good. I'm going to pull out on the edge. Now I, I was looking at some studies and I saw where they actually did this, and this is really cool. They took and they did the, the very tip like this, okay? And then they sort of pulled into the middle like this. And it gave you the little, 
um, outside edge that we wanted. Then they went into like a um, mineral spirits and they went through and they wiped out their highlights doing the same thing. And I think it gave you a really pretty look to the leaf. So I'm, it took a little practice. It's not an easy leaf to do, but once you practice it a few times, it seems like it comes pretty naturally and it's pretty easy. This one, I'm just faking the edge because it really goes off the plate. And then this side for me, because I'm right-handed, is a little easier. So I'm, let's see, yeah, it's easier. So I'm pulling towards the center like that to give me some, some veins and in the leaf and then on this side i'm going to pull kind of backhanded towards the center and then i will just go and use my wipe out to give me a little a little bit of shine to those i think they need to be a little more green and a little less wiped out so let me get a little more color on here i'm going to mix a little bit of my green with it I'm sorry, I change this around all the time, I know. And put a little bit of the green on the end. Now remember, the next time you do this, you're going to be doing a wash. So really, a lot of this that you're doing now, if you don't like it, you can change it on the next time. On this one, I think I'm going to do a little bit of the green um, or maybe even a blue. Let me get back into my... Here we go. This is the blue. Hmm. I kind of like the blue. And I'll leave that top part getting a little bit of the, the light. So I've got the blue on here and I've got the blue black. And you can kind of mix them if you need to to give you some middle ground here. I'm just smoothing it a little bit. And now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start pulling out the flowers again. So up here, I'm pulling them out because the light's coming this way. And so I want those to get a little bit of light so we know they're there. Now, I'm one of these people that kind of turns things and works on it as I go. And so I'm going to flip it now because I want to work on the underside. And if you move your plate, and that's why I like this um, turntable, but if you move the, move the plate as you're working, the cool thing is it will give you a little bit of uh, more spontaneity, less doing things exactly as you should. You know, if you know what I mean, it's you're more random, I guess is the word I'm looking for. And then down here, I want it facing me head on so that I can see when I put in those partial ones, like here. That one needs to be different. I need to pull this way. Yeah, there. Oh starting to bleed a little. Hang on. There. 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 If you use the side of your brush, it gives you a real nice kind of there. So those just show up a tad. They don't show up a whole lot, but they show up a little bit. And that gives you a little bit of and then I want these down here to show up. As you uncover them, you'll begin to realize which direction they're going. <laughs> like this one. I pulled it this way, but it's really going this way. And now I'm cleaning them up using my stump. Just trying to get some of that color a little brighter. There, that was good. That was a really good one there. And that one. And just a little there and maybe... Just a little there, okay. And then this one down here, I, I'm pretty happy with it, but um, I think I'm gonna go um, a little dark just at the tip down here. Mm -hmm. Just to get a little color in there. And then I'm just gonna pull these through. Just a couple of them. So now the secret is, how much of it are you going to leave in shadow, really? And so pull out some of the tips. 
here and there so they look like they're under some of the others and you also have a little bit of color in behind the white so that it's just a little nicer more pleasing to look at okay we're going to finish the leaves real quick well before i finish the leaves remember i said you have to think of the order you're doing things in and i forget that a lot and that's my fault um as much as it is anybody else's because i forget what i've done when but um i want to I should have done this background here before I played with these leaves because now I could mess up those leaves. But before I get to this leaf, I'm definitely doing the background. So I'm just putting this in. You can always use the background to sort of cut into your leaf too to give you the, the, um, the look you want along the side. I'm gonna bring it close so you can see what I've done so far. I hope that helps. Just a little, okay. Now I'm taking, like I said, a side load of blue-black, a little of the green, the black-green, and I'm just doing this. And I'm coming, trying to come around these little white flowerets that are down here so that I'm not disturbing them too much. I'm putting my center down there. Don't need that there. I'm going to pull it down so it's a little, there we go. That's too big a brush. I'm going to go to my number 10. And I'm just going to take the black green and we're going to go down here and pull it this way, this way, this way. Come on here. This way, this way, this way. Oops, that's really exaggerated, isn't it? Let me kind of bring those in so they aren't quite so exaggerated. Oh, that one's terrible. I'm going to wipe it off anyway, so that'll work. And let me put a little of the gold at the edge. And that's too dark. <laughs> Man, you can't win, can you? Okay, let's wipe some of this off because it's just too dark. Your finger's a great tool. Don't forget to use your finger. And then I'll just soften everything a little. That guy really didn't turn out exactly like I planned, so... I don't like this here. And when you don't like it, you can use your thumb. Man, your thumb works great. Your fingers work great. If you find something you really don't like, there, that's a little better. And let me use my tile again. That's a little dark, but veins run up the middle like this. And then they run on an angle like this usually. They're across from each other. Other times they alternate, depends on the plant. So you need to look at your plant. Go out and pull off a leaf. Even in the middle of winter, you can get a leaf off a hydrangea. So this I'm just gonna pull down that way a little, put a couple like that, there we go, all right. This one's coming up a little too high, so I'm gonna tap them, there we go. Okay, and then down here, I want to pull this a little smoother down here. It seems a little messy to me. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, and now we're going to do the sleeve over here. I'm not going to try to be quite as so creative with it. This one I'm using the green, old gold green, and the black green. I'm using mainly black green, but just a little old gold green. There's more light on this side, remember? So I want my... I would like my leaves to be a little lighter. I'm going to take the old gold and mix it with a little bit of jade just to do the edge. And this one I'm just pulling down. I kind of like that. And then I'm going to do a couple like this here and here, maybe one there. Then down here, this is the one we just made up. I'm just going to add a little blue black to it because that will reset it back into the back, recess it back into the back. Maybe a little blue there. Now see, again, I forgot to do my color here. That was silly of me. So let's go and mix my jade with my cool shadow because that's what we had here. And I'll just, that's good. Okay. I don't think I need to do more yellow there. So I'm just gonna put the, the, the cool shadow around here. Kind of jagged. 
and pull it out. Doesn't matter if you go over the flowers, we haven't finished those flowers yet, so that's fine. Okay, and we've got it. the color around the edge here I'm comfortable with. Remember, on this fire, you only fill in parts of it. You don't, you don't repaint everything. You only fill in the parts of it that you think need it. So if you get down here and you think, nope, that's fine, then leave it. And really, any of you that are new to this, uh, new to watching me, there's a ton of free printables on my website along with China. I'm, I think I'm almost out of the paint now. Um, there might be a brush or two, I don't know. I'm out of the Pico Pays that I had, so those are gone. But um, there's a lot of information there that you can get. Okay, I'm just going over all this, okay. I'm using this because I think the stump in this section actually works a little better. Don't ask me why, it just, some things it cleans out better, I don't know. Now when we get up here though, where we're going to go into the shadows again, I'm just gonna use my brush and I'm only gonna do part of some of these. Let's see, I'll do this here, oops. I'll turn it this way and I'll do this here. That's still a little there. And I'll do this here, this here. Try to use the side of the brush because it seems like it doesn't take so much off. Maybe a little more there. So you can kind of see they're kind of going into the background there. I don't know, I'm not happy with that, but it'll have to do for now because I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Okay, so this would be my second fire. Remember, you can, instead, if you don't like, like here, I didn't like how they didn't blend in the way I wanted them to, I can always take a little blue, this, the same color I'm using there, which is the, the, um, the dark blue, and just very lightly shade it over and it instantly takes them back. Can you see that? You might even wanna go a little darker like right here. I think it needs a little darker. Oh, hang on, I can't get it. This is what I mean by when your brush separates. See how I've got it? Yeah, it needs more oil. But that at least gives you an idea of what the second fire would look like. Oh, and I would also do a little more here. And I'd probably make these guys a little more prominent. Maybe just the ends of them so they show up. You don't, remember, this is the one you don't have to do everything. I might do the shadow side only on those. And I might just tap in the little vein a little bit. Just, I mean, uh, stem a little bit just to get it. Okay, everybody. Now let's talk about the final fire, okay? I'll just put this up here. So this is my second fire on my on this plate. And I'm just going to do a wash on this plate. Now what that means, for those of you that are new and have never done a wash, is you're going to take one or two. I tend to use one color that you use predominantly over the whole thing. And then you go back and pull out your highlights and anything that you want to be able to, to see. So I'm just, you don't have to do anything fancy. It's a full load. And with this full load, I kind of swirl it a little to really get a full load. And I'm just painting over everything. I'm doing this very dramatically because I want you to see. I'm doing this over everything. Can you kind of see what I'm going for already? Now, I'm not going to do this part here. Oh, let me get a tissue. I use tissues a lot. Um, I'm not going to do that part there because I really want it to pop. But I'm going to do everything else. I might leave this down here. No, I don't think I will. I'm just going to paint over everything. So you're going to put the wash over everything. I mean everything. I'm not going to put it over the center section, but I will put it over areas around the center section. Now, if you think something is already too dark, obviously don't put it over that. But 
You can use your sponge like this. Um, by the way, on your other, on the second fire, if you still want to get a little more color off, uh, let's go back to the second fire for a minute because I really didn't do it. But here, if you wanted to add a little light, you could just pounce a little and that would give you a little more light. Here, if you get too much background on, you may have to pounce a little before you start wiping stuff off, okay? Okay. Now, I want this to be roundish, so I'm going to put this on the edges of it. There we go. And I'm going over everything. Now, I know you don't have to do a wash like this. This is my way of doing a wash for this because I thought, especially since we have a white, and pull it all the way out to the edge, but since we have a white um, subject flower, um, I think it's really going to enhance it. And this is how I did my other piece. Pull it out to the edge, and then at the very end, you remember you run your hand around just to make sure you get the stuff off the edge. Okay. Okay. So this is what I have. And you know what? Now I'm looking at it, and I think, oh, I need to come down this way a little more in here. And maybe up this way here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to start with the sponge down here and just start padding. I'm using the rounded part of this sponge. Or you can press. And I'm just going to try to get those areas around the edge there so they aren't quite so harsh. And you see how much that helped? It really does help if you just pounce, 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 pounce. It'll help. Okay? And now, you put your brush into your mineral spirits, clean it completely, and then on your towel, you're going to press really hard, both sides, really hard, okay? You want to get a lot of that off. Whatever brush you're going to use for the wipeouts, that's what you want to do. Because you want to make sure that you're not going to bleed. Because if you bleed, meaning you have too much mineral spirits on your brush, and you touch this, it's going to form a puddle and just start running like crazy. Okay, I'm going to start with the leaves. I want this leaf to have a little bit of a... Here, can you see what I'm doing? This is, this is really important. This leaf, I'm just going to press and lift. And on this side, I'm going to press and lift. And then I'm going to kind of just feather it a little bit. Do you see what a difference that makes? How dramatic that is? And even if you forgot to put in your um, highlights, although you see the white there, that's why I say always leave your highlights, this helps recreate them. Now you have to keep wiping off your brush because you're going to be lifting a lot of color from this. Okay. Then we're going to come to this guy and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to press and lift towards the center. And then I'm going to sort of press and lift towards the edge. And then I'm going to pull this. Oops, I want a little more there. I'm going to pull this color down just a tad, very gently. Okay. Now I'm getting into this and it's a little bit smaller, so I do have a smaller brush. This is, I believe, a half inch, and I'm gonna use this. It's a square one. Clean it off really well. And we're gonna put a little here. And then maybe a little right here. And I'm gonna pull the color down a little. Oh, there's a little line there. I'm going to kind of get rid of it. Okay. Okay. Coming over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a little here, but more here because this is the side towards the light. The light is coming this way across the plate. And this is one that I did here that was just sort of hidden, and I'm just going to pull them out a little. Down here, you don't have to do them, but I would just hit the light side of them 
because otherwise they're going to disappear. You might even just want to clean them off a little. Some of them have maybe too much. And you have to be careful. If you're going into the background, you have to get a little oil on your brush because otherwise it's going to start smearing for you. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to clear off the stems. There's a stem on this one here. There's a stem on this one here and here. I'm just cleaning them off a little bit so I can see them. And then you can take either your brush or your stub, uh, st what is it called, stub? I have to think of the name. And you're gonna start, start with the main one because you're, you're gonna get this one bright and then you want these to be less bright. So you're gonna start here and use a brush because what it does, as you can see, is it, it gradually fades into the background. It's not as harsh as your stump. So that's why I would use a brush if you have it. I would use a number 10, which is what I'm using. I know you're going to touch the edge as you do this. Don't worry about it. You can go back and patch that. Work from the outside of the petal to the inside of the flower or flowerette. Um, it just pulls the color the correct way. And it's kind of a press and lift. Press and lift. You can, and here let me bring it close. See, you can see what's underneath there. So it's easy to figure out where those petals are. And you can sort of, I've got to clean my thing again. And I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to start moving it along a little quicker now so that you can see how I do it. Press and lift, press and lift. The brush is a little softer on this and I think it does a nicer job. You're getting to the middle here where you already have the bright color, so you can just sort of do a blanket press and lift with the edge of it. And then go back and catch these back here. These back here. You're wi I'm wiping on my towel as I go. I do two or three and I wipe. And you're gonna get a ton off because this is a ton of color, believe me. Here and here and here and here, here and here. Remember, right now what I'm doing is I'm basically doing this one all over because it's the top one. And we already have colors underneath that should give it some shading. So I don't have to do anything too dramatic on it. Okay. All right, that's that one. And I might go and make these a little bigger just so that I don't have so much color behind them if I want. You can wipe off a little of that color if you don't like it, or you can take your your uh, sponge and just lightly dab it, and it'll help the colors all blend. Now, this is the fun one. This is the one where you're going to go in and really add the, um, the peekaboo look to it. So I'm going to start at this end. I switch down to a smaller brush. Okay. And you decide where you want the light to be. And I know I want my light to be predominantly in this section. Okay. And here and here and here and here. And here and there. It's better if you can face the piece towards you and pull, because that way you can almost see what it's going to look like a lot better than if you're trying to do it upside down or backwards. Don't, don't do that. Have it face you, even if you have to push the paint to the center on some of these, like I'm doing here, because you will, you will get a better chance to see what it looks like. Hmm. 
you'll know when you need to um, clean your brush because it'll stop doing a good job for you. I'm trying to do this quickly so we don't spend a lot of time on it. Now we're starting to go back into the shadows. So I don't want these, I only want to do like maybe half of some of these. Like the top half here maybe. And maybe just this part there. And maybe just the side of this one. And the side of this one. And they start fading into the background. Now these are more like a snowball because these this was the very first plate I did before I realized that I needed to um, break up those snowballs like this. See how some of these have a different shape to them. And then the last one, that's this one. This is where I said if you wanted to add a little, you want to make it a little irregular, this is what I would recommend. You could take and just wipe out a little bit like that and then maybe wipe out a little over on this side and then maybe a little in here and then make it a little irregular you can even add white if you needed to white paint to to get you a little more um, a few more petals and then up in here we're just gonna suggest them you're just gonna do a little and let it fade off into the background. This is tedious. It does take time. You're just going to have to bear with it and do it. And I think I want a little more blue up in here too. Just a couple places here it needs to have a little blue in the background. Oops, here. I know I put the wash on, but you can add a little other color into the background if you want to. You just have to be very careful and mix it well into the background so it doesn't have a line. Okay, so um, pick up those brushes, keep paintings, and I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope you take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.